you're fed up of Windows and you think you're ready to install one of the most beginner-friendly Linux distros, let me show you how. Linux Mint is known to be great for first-time Linux users, especially those coming from Windows. It's ease of use, it's similar appearance to Windows, makes it a, makes it a brilliant choice first time around. So I'll be showing you how to install it from start to finish, identifying what drive you're going to be installing it on, flashing the ISO, installing it onto your PC, setting up a few bits and pieces, some of your apps and that sort of stuff. I'll show you how to do that. So follow along. Brewdog today. Right, so the first step we've got to do is we've got to figure out what drive we've got in our PC. If you're on a laptop, the likely it is you're only going to have one storage device and that's going to have your operating system and it's going to have all your storage on it. So in that case, that's quite simple. If you're on a PC, the likely it is you're going to have more than one drive. So you'll have your C drive and then your storage, you might even have a few more. So what we're going to do first is I'll crack this open and we'll take a look at what I've got in here. If I, just, if I take you off this stand, you can actually see what's going on. So. So you can see here, which you probably can't see, because you can see here, this is my C drive. So that's what my operating system on, and that's what I'm going to install Linux Mint on. This one here, this is my storage device. So this is a 512 gigabyte NVMe. That's what I've got for storage. Like I said, if you're on a laptop, likely it is, you're only going to have that one. So now that we know what we've got, we can install Linux Mint on it. So there's three ways that I know of installing Linux. One. You can do a dual boot where you keep Windows and you have Linux as well, so you can switch between the two of them. Second one, you just have Linux, you get rid of Windows altogether. And the third way, you can keep Windows on one of your disks and you can have Linux on your other disk and you can physically swap them out. So when you want to go to Windows, you, you keep your Windows one in there. When you want to go to Linux, you keep your Win Linux one in there. Now, it's not very practical, but it's definitely doable if you're not going to change it very often. But for what I'm going to show you here, we're going to do a complete Linux install. We're going to get rid of Windows. It's just going to be a Linux machine. Now, I can't stress this next point enough. If you're doing a complete Linux build, you're ditching Windows altogether, you need to back up all your data. Photos, documents, videos, music, even export your bookmarks, your passwords from your browser, all that. Put all that on an external drive and keep it somewhere. You can upload it to the cloud if you don't have an external drive, but make sure you've backed it up. You've got it somewhere safe where you know it is because this is going to wipe it completely. You're going to go back to nothing. Now, this is a completely fresh install of Windows. The only thing I've got on here is OBS, so I can do a screen recording so you can see what I'm doing on the screen. So we're going to start that up now. And we're going to go to Linux Mint's website. And we're going to go to the downloads. And you'll see here, we've got the three different types of Linux Mint that's available. You've got Cinnamon. This is your most modern, sleek, up-to-date. You have XFCE. Now this is, this is for your older software, so your smaller notebooks or um, older software that doesn't have much RAM. This is what you're gonna to wanna to install on that. And then finally, we have Mate, which is like um, an older, it's still modern behind the physical appearance, but it has a more classic look to it. So, but what we're gonna go for is the Cinnamon edition. And what we're actually downloading here is an ISO file. And you want to think of an ISO file like all the contents on a CD. And what we're going to do with that contents on that CD is we're going to burn it to a USB stick. So if you're a naughty kid, you'll remember LimeWire and downloading all your music from LimeWire to burn to a CD to play in the car. And that's effectively what we're doing here, except from this time, it's legal. The ISO file will be burning to our USB stick to make it a bootable USB stick. So let's download this ISO file and then we'll get to burning it. And you're going to download it from somewhere that's near to you. So I'm in the United Kingdom. I believe the University of Kent have something for me. Here you go. Yes, yeah, so we want to download it from the University of Kent. And we're downloading. Time for a swig of beer. We've got the ISO file downloaded. So what I didn't explain very well there was the mirror on the Linux Mint website. So a mirror, you're basically downloading it from their server. So that's why I've gone to the United Kingdom and I've chosen University of Kent mirror service. So if you're in, you know, like here, you can see... In Turkey, they have the different mirrors. And then, so you want to find the country that's closest to you because it'd be quickest to download effectively and make sure it's like a semi reliable source. I mean, all the ones on Linux Mint you're going to be able to trust, but in general, if you're doing this on something else, just make sure you trust it. So that's why I've used the University of Kent Mirror Service because I know that that's something that's not going to infect my PC with all sorts of horrible malware. But right, now we've got the ISO file, we need to download another bit of software called Belina Etcher. And this is what we're the tool we're going to use, which will effectively burn the ISO file onto our USB stick, which will make it a bootable USB stick. So then we can flash it and install it onto our 
PC. So let's do that. So to do that, we're gonna to go to Belina Etcher, which I can never spell, Belina Etcher, there you go. So Belina Etcher, so Belina Etcher at the front, and we're gonna to go to download, and I'm on Windows x86 64, so I'll download this, and there we go, we're downloading. This should be a lot quicker. Now that the EX file is downloaded, we will open that up. So with that open, we're gonna flash from file, we go to our downloads here, and you can see here we've got Linux Mint 22.2 20, Cinnamon 64-bit. So this is the ISO file. So then we're gonna plug in our USB stick. For this, you will need something above eight gigabytes. So plug that in. Select target, and we can see it there. And then we're just gonna simply click flash, and that will then burn that to that USB stick. Which will give that five, 10 minutes, let's do its thing. And there you go, that's now done. So I can remove that USB stick, and I'm gonna labor the point now. And it's at this point you wanna make sure you've backed up all your data, you've got everything off your PC that you value. So the only thing I need to get off now is this screen recording that I've been using. So I'm gonna do that quickly. That's done, eject that. So now I've got my two USB sticks, one with my data, one with Linux Mint on. So I'm gonna put my data to one side, leave that over there. Next, we'll turn off our PC, which I'll do now. Shut down. And now with your USB stick that you've got Linux Mint flash to, you're gonna plug that in. Can I get this first time? Yeah, first time, plug that in. And then you're gonna turn your PC back on and you're gonna do two things. You're gonna get into your boot menu or your BIOS. Now, depending on your PC, you might have options for both. If you can get into your boot menu, get into your boot menu. If you can get into your BIOS, we can then get into your boot menu. So I'm gonna show you how to get into my BIOS and on my PC, it's pressing delete, delete, delete. So after I'll be spamming delete. On your PC, it might be F2, it could be F12, it could be F10. So that's what we've got to do, get into our BIOS and then get to our boot menu because we need to change the order so our USB stick is the first thing that this PC is gonna boot from. So, turn this on and I'm spamming delete. Like I said, this could be F2, F10, F12. You need to see what it is for your PC and it should normally tell you when you start your PC up. There you go, delete. So now I'm into my BIOS. So we're gonna go over to boot. We wanna change mine if we by clicking on it, hopefully. There we go, and we're gonna change it to this one, partition two. So like I said, on yours, you might just be able to get directly into your boot menu, which is great. But if yours is maybe an older PC, you might have to get into your BIOS and then get into boot menu. But this is what you wanna change. And you wanna change it so your USB stick is the first priority in the boot menu, because that's what you want your PC to boot from. So now that that's done, we're gonna go save and exit. And also on older, you can see on this, I'm using my mouse. On older PCs, you might have to use um, arrow keys and enter. Save and exit, save and exit setup. So now we're rebooting with our boot menu changed to boot from our USB stick. And there you go. So we're now into the grub menu. So we're gonna go start Linux Mint Cinnamon, which is the first, which is what we want. You'll do some thinking now. Time for a swig of beer. There we've got the Linux Mint logo. Happy days. There you go. So now we've got our Linux Mint desktop. I'll just move my beer out of the way. So very similar to Windows in the appearance, which is partly why I like Linux Mint, especially if it's your first time. Coming over to this will feel quite familiar. But what we're looking at here is it booting from our USB stick. It's not actually installed onto our PC. So at this point, you can have a little tinker about and a play and figure it out. Just make sure you like it before you commit. But what we're gonna do is, in the top left-hand corner you can see here, install Linux Mint. So we're gonna click on that, and we're gonna install it completely on the PC. And we're just gonna follow these steps. They're quite simple. So me, I'm English, English language. Keyboard layout, so English UK for me. Now your Wi-Fi, so I will block this out just so no one sees this.
Yes, we want to install multimedia. Right, so this is the point you select if you want to do a dual boot or you want to go completely Linux Mint. So I'm going to go all in, completely Linux Mint on this. Continue. And this is what we were talking about earlier, our C drive and our storage. So I know my C drive is 256 gigabytes. So I know this for me is my C drive. This is where I want to install Linux Mint on. Continue. Select our time zone. Yes. Your name. Joe. Joe, with an E. Pick username. Joe. Oh, it must be lowercase. Joe. Password. So I want this to log in automatically. I'm not worried about a password on this. And that's now doing its thing. It's going to install Linux Mint. And then you can see our installation is complete. We're going to restart now. And what it will prompt us to do is to remove our USB stick, but we'll wait for the prompt. There you go. So we're just going to remove that, remove our bootable USB stick. We're going to press enter like it's asking us. And there you go, we can see Linux Mint is now installed, fully operational. So I'm going to show you a few little bits that I like to change and a few, and a few apps that I like to install. But the first thing I'm going to do is install OBS so I can get a screen recorder going. And now that we've got OBS installed, you can see my screen. And the first thing you should do with any Linux install is update your packages. So we are going to go to terminal. Well, this is what we would normally do. We would go to terminal, which scares people. We go sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade dash y. And I'll just tell you what that means before I do it. And I'll show you what we're going to do instead. Sudo means you're a super user. That's your equivalent of being of running something as an administrator in Windows. APT, that's your package manager, advanced package tools, uh, and then update and upgrade. And then the dash Y, what that means is it's gonna, um, it's gonna say yes to all the permissions. So, but we're not gonna do that. We don't have to use the terminal in Linux Mint, which is why it's so good for new users. You have the option to, but you don't have to. So we'll close it out. And down here in the bottom, we have this little shield. We're gonna click on that. Okay. And it's telling us here we've got new we've got we've got stuff to do. So we're going to apply the updates. It's going to ask for our password. And now you can see all our packages are up to date. We haven't had to use a scary terminal. So that's a win. So there's a couple of things I like to do now to make Linux Mint feel a little bit more Windows. Because I've used Windows for the past 25 years, I want what I'm using my operating system as Linux to feel similar. And there's a few little tweaks you can do to do that. So we'll just put some folders on our desktop so I can show you. Create a new folder, create a new folder. So on a Windows PC, you would normally click on this, like that. You click twice and you'd be able to rename it. Not like that, we can do it. So we're gonna go edit, preferences, and we go to behavior. And then there's an option here, click on file name twice to rename it. We're going to select that, close that out. And now if we click on this twice, we can rename it. Renamed file. So that's good. And the next thing I want to change is, you see, I can't move these. I like to be able to move things around. So to do that, we're going to go to right click, customize. We're going to change, we're going to tick this, auto arrange. And now we have control. So that's another thing I like to change. And the next thing I want to change is how that we view what's in our folders. I much prefer lists, which is in Windows, it's called the detail view. So by default, you'll get this view, which we can change, there you go. So we can get this sort of view. We can, there you go. We can get that sort of view, which is fine. But then if we go to, you can see if I had stuff in these folders, you see it's back to the the uh, it's back to the grid view which I don't like so we're going to change that edit preferences and then here new view new folders using we want to go list view and there you go so now when we open up our folders we'll get a list view 
And we can go a little bit step further on this. We can actually add information to this. So we go back to edit, preferences, list column. So I like to have one site was created. There you go, created. Uh, and the rest of it, I'm not too interested in. But you can select what you want, you know, date accessed. So that's what I want, date created. So that's what I like to have on, on uh, my file system. So that's a few little things that to me just make it feel a little bit more Windows. And I think if you can make it feel a little bit more natural to what you're used to, the likelihood is you might stick with it. So now that we've done that, the next thing we're going to do is turn our firewall on. So we're going to go to down here, which would be your start button. And here we're going to type in firewall. Firewall configuration. Ask us for a password. I don't know why this isn't on by default. And we're going to, this here, status. That's now on. So we've now got a firewall on Linux Mint. So that is just some things that I like to do on a fresh install of Linux Mint to make myself feel a little bit more like, a little bit more at home on Windows. So now that we've modified Linux Mint to feel a little bit more like Windows, makes us feel a little bit more at home, a few bits of software that I like to install. And to do this, we go to what they call their software manager, which you can see is just down here. You're just going to click on this, which is what we've just got opened up here. So the first one I like to install is VLC. It's a media player. So you're going to want that if you're going to watch a video or anything like that, or some music, listen to some music. This is a great choice. So we're just going to install that. That's the first one. We'll have a look at that. So yeah, there you go. Much like Windows Media Player. The next bit of software, like Task Manager in Windows, called Stacer. So we're going to install that. It's a very useful bit of software. It allows you to like uh, end programs if they're not working very well. It also gives you like a graphical um, chart so you can keep an eye on what's going on, on your PC. Really useful bit of software. That was quick to install. So you see we've got no apps running or anything like that. But it allows you to start, close, and all that sort of stuff. It's a useful bit of software. But I'd highly recommend having this installed as like your task manager effectively. And by default, you'll find that Linux Mint will come with LibreOffice, which is a very good alternative to Microsoft Word. So this is very good. And you can see, you can actually open .doc files. So we can, uh, we can also save as, come down here. So we can save it in a file format, which is compatible with Microsoft Word. Very useful. And LibreOffice is solid. It's, you know, great community back in, people love it. But there's also an alternative called OnlyOffice. Now OnlyOffice looks a little bit more polished. So I'll just show you that. So OnlyOffice. With that installed, we can launch it. You see, this looks very similar to Word. And same again, we can save it as docs file so word will be able to open this and you'll also be able to open word in this if we just have a look here's your excel so that's an alternative to the libre office which comes standard on a linux mint install and the next bit of software to have a look at is called kden live this is a video editing software it's similar to davinci resolve not as powerful but i mean for me it would do everything i'd need and more unfortunately i'm too far down the road of using davinci to go back now but if i was starting off this is a software I'd look at using. Yeah, there you go. See, nice user interface. And like I said, if you're just starting off, I would recommend learning this software. Nice bit of kit. And that's four or five bits of software I'd recommend you take a look at. There's plenty more in the software manager for you to have a peruse through and see what else takes your fancy. And I'm gonna call that a day. So we've taken this from Windows. We've installed Linux Mint. We've done some modifications on it. And we've also talked about a few bits of software. Hopefully some of you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.